Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome those as you would have us welcome them. We sin in thought, in word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Blessed be God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior through whom we welcome and have received grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 
you're invited to join in the prayer of the day. And the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the beer shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Your paths overflow with plenty, O oh God. Your paths overflow with plenty. Your paths overflow with plenty, O oh God. Your paths overflow with plenty. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall bows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer. To you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Your paths overflow with plenty, O oh God. Your paths overflow with plenty. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O oh God of our salvation. O oh hope of all the ends of the earth and the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. Your paths overflow with plenty, O oh God. Your paths overflow with plenty. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness 
and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Your paths overflow with plenty, O oh God. Your paths overflow with plenty. A reading from Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done with the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. It is in your mouth and in your heart. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. We welcome you to the service this morning and so glad you've joined us. The gospel for this Sunday is in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning with the first verse. Now that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And such great crowds gathered around him that he got out into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as the, he sowed, some seed fell on the path. And as he came, and, or, and as the birds came and ate them up, other seed fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, 
and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold, that anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, that which is sown in the heart. And this is what's sown in the path. And as for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble and persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit, and yields in one case a hundredfold, another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. In the song, The Rose, the poet sings, about how when the night seems so lonely and the road seems so long, it may seem that love is only for the lucky and the strong. But remember, deep beneath the snow is a seed. And in the spring, with the sun's warmth, becomes a rose. The seed of the word of God does bloom and blossom. But Christ reminds us this morning, the seed of the word isn't always able or allowed to bloom and to blossom. There may be the wintry times in our lives the wintry blast of the coronavirus may send chills down our spine. We may lose a loved one. And then so many things may pile up in our lives that we become depressed and despondent. And it seems as though it's overwhelming and it hits us like a wintry storm. But the seed of the word, however, is powerful in and of itself. Christ reminds us of this this morning, but he does remind us that there may be times when the seed is hindered from growing. There may be the hard ground and the word may be received with indifference. There may be the shallow ground and the word may re be received initially and lack depth. And there may be the thorny ground when we live in an age of distraction. The seed of the word, however, blooms and blossoms when there is good ground and when we are receptive to the word. We can then bear the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, patience, peace, and long-suffering. The seed of the word has been sown in your life by your parents, Sunday school teachers, aunts and uncles, grandparents, and pastors. And just as the sun's warmth in the spring shines so that the seed can become a rose, even more so the love of God's Son poured out in your life 
the words and promises of Christ can bloom and blossom. The seed of God's word is blooming and blossoming in your lives. There's much evidence of that here among the members and friends of First Lutheran Church of the Reformation. You have borne the fruits of the Spirit in your lives. And with the Son's love, we can be sustained by the Word in the times of our sadness. God hears and we can be warmed. There was a man once who came to Christ and he brought a donkey with him so Christ could ride on the donkey and he invited the man to come to his home so that he could heal his son. And Jesus asked the man, do you believe that I can heal your son? And he said, yes. And so the man headed home without Jesus and with the donkey with nobody on it. And he got halfway home and he was met by many friends and family who were rejoicing to tell him that his son had been healed. And he asked when it happened. And they determined it was the very moment that Jesus had asked the man, do you believe that I can heal your son? And he said, yes. And he came home only with a word in his pocket, but that's all that he needed, the word that Christ gave him. Some years ago, I took my computer to a stationery store for some reason, and they asked me if I would like to upgrade my computer. And I said, yes. And the technician appeared to be a quite a young boy, but he started working on my computer, and all of a sudden it crashed, and there was nothing left on the hard drive, and there was nothing that I could do to recover all that had been lost, especially sermons that had been prepared over the years. And Pastor Dave Olson, who was one of the interim pastors here at First Lutheran, told me that it was good and important to realize that the seed of the word had been sown in years past. And that was comforting and reassuring to me to remind me that the seed of the word does endure. So the Lord promised through the prophet Isaiah, as the rain cometh down and as the sun from heaven and does not return where it came from, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that whereunto I send it. Luther once said, God speaks, and those things which are not come into being. Abraham was called to go in an unknown land into an unknown future and to leave the Ur of Chaldees. And he did so only on the basis of the word that he had received from the Lord. Martin Luther spent a lot of time with theologians and seminary students discussing theology. And while he did so, he drank a stein of beer. While at the same time, he acknowledged that he knew the seed of the word was spreading throughout all of Europe, resulting in the Protestant Reformation. Paul similarly was in prison in Philippi for proclaiming the gospel. And he acknowledged that the powerful word was spreading throughout Asia Minor while he was in prison. And he described the word as the unfettered word. The Apostle Paul 
Peter said, we are born anew, not by the corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And in his hour of temptation, Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Whenever we're able to gather for Holy Communion, Christ invites us to come to the table he prepares for us. And Luther describes Holy Communion as the visible word through which Christ is present, assuring us of his grace and mercy and confidence in the unfailing power of God's word can be ours. Years ago in the Lutheran hymnal used by the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, there was a prayer that was prayed at the end of the worship service. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise read, mark, learn, we learn, and inwardly digest them that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the battle hymn of the Reformation, Martin Luther wrote that when tempted by the evil one, one little word can fell him. The woman from Syrophoenicia came and asked Jesus to heal her daughter, and initially he answered her not a word, but she persisted, and eventually Christ healed her daughter as she trusted in that word. In a church, there was a lonely old gentleman who passed away, and all his friends had long before passed on themselves. So a gentleman assumed that there wouldn't be anybody or not many people there for the funeral. So he decided to go. And when the funeral procession came to the grave, he stood at the entrance to the cemetery in his raincoat. It was a dreary, raining day. And he was the only one there in addition to the pastor. And so after the service, he walked up to the grave and saluted with a wide salute worthy of a king. And then as he walked out, the pastor discovered that he was a brigadier general. And the man explained that that gentleman was his Sunday school teacher. He had been a pretty rowdy young boy, but that Sunday school teacher had such an influence on his life that he wanted to be there to pay his honor. In Luther's explanation to the third article of the Apostle Creed, in the small catechism, he proclaims the good news that God's word is powerful. Luther says, I believe that I cannot by my own strength or understanding believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But instead, the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts and made me holy and kept me in the true faith. Just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one communion of faith. Apostle Peter assures us that we are born again by the word, not the incorruptible seed, but, or not the corruptible seed, but the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Paul urges us to dwell richly in his word. This is exactly what James meant 
when he said, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Through the word of absolution, we can believe that our sins are removed as far from us as east is from the west. And we are, when we read our wits end, we can hold to the promise that the Lord is our shepherd and he leads us beside still waters and restores our soul. God's word can change a cold, cruel heart so that a person becomes a loving, compassionate person. In the small catechism, Martin Luther asks, what is baptism? He says, baptism is not simple water only, but it is the water comprehended in God's command and connected with God's word. In answer to the question, how can water do such great things? Luther says, it is not the water indeed that does them, but the word of God, which is in and with the water and faith, which trust such word of God in the water. For without the word of God, the water is simple water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism that is a gracious water of life and a washing of regeneration in the Holy Spirit. When we come again together to worship, the Apostle Paul reminds us how we can receive the living word in our life together. The Apostle told the Christians in the congregation of Colossae that they should let the word of Christ dwell in them richly, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace to the Lord. Worship is not just vertical in our relationship to God, but it is also our relationship horizontally to everybody else in the faith community. We speak the word to one another. A professor at the seminary said that it is as though we elbow one another with the gospel and with the word of God, ensuring us, assuring us that Christ the Lord is risen. When we're able to gather for Holy Communion, Christ invites us to come. And Luther explains that Holy Communion is the visible word through which Christ is present, assuring us of grace and mercy and confidence and the unfailing power of God's word. One spring day, a gardener invited his neighbor to see the packet of seeds that he had bought, describing all these beautiful flowers. And he said he was going to plant the seeds and hopefully have the most beautiful flower garden that he's ever had. And so about a month later, the neighbor came back and asked the man how his flower garden was doing. And he said, I'm sorry, it hasn't done well. Well, what was it, he asked? Was it the soil? Was it the heat? Were there pests? And the man said, no. And he, then the neighbor said, well, was it the seeds? And he said, yes, because the seeds were never planted. I never got around to it. Now, getting the seed into the ground can sometimes be the hardest part of growing things, especially in Israel at the time of Jesus, as we heard in the parable. But the area itself was full of obstacles, and most of the ground was hilly. In life, 
the seed of the word of God is not the problem. The word is powerful, but it needs to be planted. And then it will bloom and blossom in our lives. Amen. and thanksgiving God we would offer for all things living you have made good harvest of sown fields fruits of the orchard hay from Let us confess the Christian faith into which we were baptized, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into Unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their homes in the trees, and for the lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. 
increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Protect the men and women of our armed forces, especially Kevin, Frank, Ali, Wesley, Zach, Milland, Keenan, Jonathan, Elijah, Sean, and Chaplain Dominic. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need, especially Sandy, Myrtle, Joan, Leslie, Greta, Phyllis, Ryan, Jennifer, Lisa, Devin, Eric, Anna, Walter, and Pat. Protect first responders and essential workers. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries, especially our Monday Mingle and Wednesday Pasta, that brings the community to our table to share with us, and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died, especially Nathan Soderblom, Bishop of Uppsala, whom we commemorate today. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, in fulfillment of the promise made to David, you established a lasting covenant through Jesus, your beloved Son. You anointed him and raised him higher than all kings on earth. Remember your covenant so that all who are marked with the cross of your Son may sing of your mercies forever through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're invited to join now as we come to our Heavenly Father, as dear children come to a loving parent and pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us receive the benediction with which God would bless his people. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So may the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Comforter, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit keep you and bless you now and forever. Amen. You 
shall go out with joy and peel it forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands while you Thanks be to God.